Star Tracker season is coming. I'm talking portable, battery powered, star party ready rigs. Wide field nebulae, the Milky Way, nightscapes. Ooh, baby, I am ready. All that great stuff will be here by late May and you better be ready too. This is my latest and greatest deep sky astrophotography kit. It's lean, it's mean, and most importantly, ready to go anywhere. In this video, I wanna share my latest and greatest star tracker rig and hopefully it will give you some ideas for your next build this summer. Now, you can't beat a DSLR camera and lens on a star tracker for total freedom. No camera controller or additional power supply needed. But my idea for this rig was to be as full featured as possible and still be able to pick it up and plunk it down in the middle of a field on a moonless night. A star tracker setup like this is lightweight and portable. Okay, so this one's not that light anymore, especially when you consider that I need to bring along an additional portable battery to run it all. But it's definitely the most portable automated astrophotography setup that I've ever put together. Before we go any further, I wanna thank my good friend, Steve Malia here in Ontario for lending me his telescope. He's been my biggest fan since 2017 and the owner of Starfield Optics. We'll get to the core details of the scope in a minute, but first let's look at the mount. The Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI was all the rage last spring, and for good reason. They added that one missing thing that everyone who had the original Star Adventure wanted. Complete go-to functionality to point to any object in the night sky you want to look at. It even comes with a slick little app to run the mount hands-free using your smartphone. I think the GTI may have have gotten slightly overlooked. This was probably due to long delays in orders and the equally as portable and full featured ZWO AM5 coming out around the same time. Unlike the AM5, the GTI is definitely in the star tracker category with a maximum payload capacity of 11 pounds. As you may have noticed, it looks like I've gone a little over that, but I haven't actually weighed the kit to find out for sure. I even had to add an additional counterweight to balance the load. I'm confident that at the focal length I'm shooting at, the GTI will do just fine. In fact, I, I know it will. I, this is the rig I used to capture the Seagull Nebula in February. The telescope is a Starfield Optics Gear 60, a quadruplet apple chromatic refractor that shoots at a focal length of 300 millimeters at f5.4. I really love that 300 millimeter range and the four element design gives it a nice flat field. I believe the real test of a refractor's optics are when you shoot with no filter or a simple UV IR filter on a broadband target. And that's exactly what I'm hoping to do with this kit this summer when I bring this rig to the dark skies of Cherry Springs State Park in June. Last year at Cherry Springs, I brought along the GTI and the Radian 61, a triplet, and it did a decent job on the Blue Horsehead Nebula. However, I think this quad will do even better. The imaging system on here is pretty sweet. The camera that I have attached is a one-shot color ZWO ASI 2400 MC Pro. This is a full frame cooled astro camera. I have a handy two inch Starazona filter drawer in front of the camera. This means that from home with this setup, I can do some work with a multi band pass narrow band filter like the Optolong L Extreme, or just leave the drawer empty if I'm shooting from a dark sky site and I wanna shoot broadband. Longtime fans of this channel will notice that I'm finally starting to use an autofocuser, the ridiculously hassle-free ZWO EAF. That's right, this telescope can now focus itself using the stars in the field of the object I'm capturing. Historically, I haven't used an autofocuser for my astrophotography. I just manually focus with a Batnoff mask. So I'm hoping that this accessory leads to sharper images overall when it comes time to stack the images. To tie everything together, the ever-evolving ASI Air will take care of the automation. I'll use this wireless controller to take the pictures, run the auto-guiding, and even control the mount itself. I actually prefer to control the Star Adventure GTI with the ASI Air rather than the Skywatcher SynScan mobile app, and it seems like most others do too. Oh right, the guide scope. 
Look at this little guy. This is the Starfield 30 millimeter guide scope. I can't believe how small you can get these things now. It's a perfect option for a star tracker setup when you really need to keep the overall weight down. You could also use an off axis guider. I just don't happen to have one for this rig. Okay, now to power everything. The Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI has internal AA batteries to power it, which I love. But the camera system I have on here needs power. For this, I'm going to use a totally overpowered portable power station. The Anchor 757 powerhouse with 1500 watts of total output power. I mean, having enough power to run this rig for two nights straight is great, but this thing is heavy. In terms of connections, I can run almost everything through the ASI Air Pro I have mounted to the telescope. I have an ASI Air Plus as well, but that's spoken for on another rig. My primary imaging camera, the guide camera, and the autofocuser are all powered through the Air. The only thing I'm not powering with the ASI Air will be two USB dew heater bands. For these, I'll plug a simple power bar with powered USB ports into the Anchor Power Station. So the overall weight of my imaging payload is actually more like seven pounds. It's, so it's not over the limit of 11 pounds, but it was over the limit of the standard counterweight that comes with the GTI. So I had to add an additional counterweight to find balance. And as you can see, I've got that pretty good here in both axes. Here's the declination. Pretty good, pretty evenly weighted on both ends. I got a lot of, that camera is heavy there, that big full frame camera. I just did a little more research about the telescope too. So a 60 millimeter quad, it's actually an F5, not an F5.4. And there is an internal two inch filter slot for a filter there. So you don't need to use a drawer the way I am. That's just the way I have it configured. Nice rail along the top here for you to put a guide scope, obviously comes separately, and the autofocuser is something I've bolted on as well. But a nice telescope package that is not cheap, but this is a really quality astrograph telescope. It uses FPL 53 glass for anyone interested. So yes, it is a star tracker rig, and I'm within the payload capacity of the GTI, uh, but it's this is a this is a hefty little package here. It's it's you know, I can lift it around, but way heavier than say a star tracker with a DSLR and lens on it. Got a couple of color combinations going in here, the, the white and green and then the black and red dominating the top. I think it looks pretty cool. Ah, yes, the tripod, I almost forgot. This is my favorite tripod for a star tracker sized rig. It's the Radian carbon fiber tripod, so collapsible, super sturdy, super strong. It's really similar to the ZWO, um, tripod that comes with the AM5. Uh, I think the legs are a little bit smaller, but a really heavy duty carbon fiber tripod that makes it so easy when you're polar aligning because you can um, unlock the base plate here and just spin it around wherever you want. So, um, you know, doing that polar alignment is so much easier with that. And then you can, of course, lock it into place. You're not just stuck with the declination bolts. On the, on the side of the mount. So really cool tripod, I'll leave a link for that too. I'm feeling pretty good about this setup, especially the fact that I can do this with it. <laughs> with the ASI Air, I can electronically polar align the mount and then also use it to point the telescope and track anywhere in the night sky I want to through the app. I can even automate a mosaic project through the ASI Air, something I've always wanted to do. Picture capturing a huge high resolution image of the Milky Way core and Sagittarius and Scorpius 300 millimeters at a time. It would take a while, but just picture the details of that photo if I were to print it out. That would be a nice mural for the garage, actually. Ooh. Well, there you have it. This is my portable star tracker setup for the summer, and it's more full featured than ever before. What do you think? If you're more advanced than I am, I'd love to hear any suggestions you have for ways that I can tweak and improve this setup. And if you're a beginner, I've left links to every piece of this setup in the description so you can go about creating a similar rig yourself. I can't wait to test out this rig here in the backyard, but more importantly, I can't wait to travel with it to some dark sky sites to get some unforgettable images. Until next time, happy rig building and clear skies.